Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And today I'm going to show you something that is both technically amazing and as a product, kind of absolutely useless. And it is from Stability AI, the people behind Stable Diffusion, as well as Tripo AI. And this is basically a single image to 3D generator. And what you see in front of you, this is a typical result. I'm going to give you a second to guess what this is. And if you said Brad Pitt, you're much better at this than I am. But yeah, that's Brad Pitt generated from a single image. In fact, that image is available over here. So this image generated this model. And uh, again, the end result, the texturing, everything else is it's pretty weak, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm really underwhelmed by that. But at the same time, some of this is actually pretty staggering because all we had is a single front image to go from. So how did it do at generating a 3D model? Well, let's go take a look at the back. And what you're going to notice here is we have creasing in the coat. We have a cut where a tail should be. So it knows what a jacket is and how to fill in the spaces there. That is impressive. It even seems to know what hair is and the hair doesn't quite go into the jacket, but this is still an area where, uh, let's just say 3D AI definitely needs some work there. But you see here in filling out the rest of it, the dimensions that it didn't actually have, the fact that this is a jacket that it creases and so on, that part is technically absolutely amazing. But when we look at this model, there is no way in hell that you would be able to use that for anything. So again, it is an amazing technology with results that are just not that usable in the end. And Brad isn't my only victim here. I've actually created a couple of other models here. Let's just bring them into the floor. So let's go over here. We will switch this over to the outliner and we will turn them back on. So we have a couple of other things I've generated here and all of them are the same deal. So this guy was a stock footage guy. Uh, he got a much worse treatment than Brad did. So humans are not great. And you know AI and its hand problems? <laughs> well, they're not getting better there. But at the same time, look at the shirt. It actually managed to get this flare at the front to know that it's a shirt. And then for depth, it understands this is a character and he's got a butt. He's got a back that curves in. This was all extrapolated from a single front image. That part is kind of impressive. And then finally, we have this 3D model over here. And you can see the end results here again. You're getting that blobby clay-like gauzy and splat thing. Uh, this came from yet another single image. Let me just bring that up. There we go. So here is your initial image that we started from. Here is our generated results. And you're going to notice it looks fine from about here. And then when you get closer to it, yeah, that is good. And then you're going to see outright floss. For example, this light post uh, turned into the corner and the light just floats. Same thing here. There was a light post up here. They turned it into a tree and then the light is just floating in the air. The back, it didn't really know what to do with it. We didn't get any windows or anything, but it did give us this nice little shrub and tree line. Keep in mind, it didn't have anything to work with to generate this and this, this was all done by using the AI side of things, whereas this is what it kind of started with. Again, the results are technically brilliant-ish and completely and utterly useless. So let's head on over. Uh, this just released the other day. So here we are on the Stability AI side of things. Uh, they announced this Tripo SR. Uh, this is in partnership with Tripo AI. Uh, this is powered by Stable Diffusion for the image generation side of things. So they partnered with Tripo AI to develop Tripo SR, a fast 3D object reconstruction model inspired by recent work of LRM, large reconstruction model for single image to 3D. This new image to 3D model is designed to cater to the growing demands of entertainment, gaming, industrial design, and architectural professionals with responsive outputs for visualizing detailed 3D objects. And you can see some of their examples here, the input image, and then the output image. Uh, again, I don't think any of these would actually be usable in a game as an example. Uh, they got some breakdowns of the performance of it, uh, how it compares to open LRM as an example. So it definitely is doing a better job than them, but it's still generating images that I don't, you might be able to use this as an environmental prop, for example, but everything has that blobbiness here. By the way, the code is all available uh, on Tripo AI's GitHub. The weights are available up on Hugging Face. Uh, it's all one thing you're going to want to know about these kind of things is how is it actually powered. And this is a subset of the Objiverse data set. So this is a CC by data set of uh, 3D objects. Now, there are some issues around this data set, and I'm going to show you one of them immediately. Because what we're going to do is head on over to the product itself. And here you see it. This is Tripo AI, available at uh, Tripo 
triple3d.ai as the website. And you can see some of the things that it's generating. Uh, so there's got two products here, basically. One is a, a text to 3D generator, and second is the new image generator. And you can see here, if I want a hamburger, the one they just showed in that earlier example, boom, there it is being created, uh, as you can see. Uh, if I want a robot, boom. Here is a robot that it has generated. Now, let me show you some problems with using the Objiverse data set. Let's get a hero. This hero is quite clearly Batman. Batman is trademarked out the wazoo. If you use Batman in your game, you will be sued like you wouldn't believe. So definitely one of those things you want to be aware of before you even touch this. Is so the data set might be generated on uh, CC BY and open data. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that the model was modeled on something that is you know, again, permissible to be under those data sets. So that is definitely one of the tricks. So again, there's two products here from Trupo uh, 3D.ai. Uh, one is their text to 3D here. So you can see a couple of generations. A golem made of stone looks pretty good on first glance. A lot of these actually look pretty good on first glance. A lot of them also look like they won't get you into copyright trouble. And if you think Batman's bad, what about if you try to use LeBron? You can't use LeBron, just letting you know that. Unless you have a license, using LeBron, not great. But some of these things, again, you could see where this could lead to, um, again, AI is as bad as it will ever be. So in the future, this is going to be even better. And this is... This is pretty reasonable. This this is uh, something you could use as a base mesh to start sculpting from. Uh, and then we've got other things here. So at first glance, for example, this golem looks amazing. So let's take a look at the actual model. So what you're going to see here, by the way, you can download any of these as GLB files. So click in that link over there. So here is the golem. Looks pretty good from this angle. So let's say if I wanted to use this in a game environment, what would I have to do? Well, first off, I would have to get rid of this base. This base is obviously not right. But let's look at other things. When you look at it a little bit closer, so you see over here, his hands have, uh, I don't know what's going on there. Let's say 3D is not that much. So we got this weird double texture going on with the hands. You're probably gonna have to clean that up as well. Let's look at the foot. So at the back here, the proportions are useless. So you couldn't use this as it is. You'd have to remodel it. And then we come on over here. You're going to see we have this weird hump coming off his hand like this was another uh, vestigial thumb that was removed. So even though something that looks really good at first glance, it's not useful except for as maybe a background prop, something like a vase here. You could use a vase or a vase or a teacup. Uh, this kind of stuff, yeah, you could definitely use that in an environment. But things that look immediately good, not necessarily great. But the other part, this is the part that's new, the stable diffusion part. Basically, you send in an image, it creates a 3D model. So let's give that a try. So come over here uh, and let's use a tree model. So all the other ones I've done before, basically just send up the model and then draft an image. Uh, when you use the uh, text to 3D, it gives you uh, uh, four images to choose from. Here it creates a single one. It's actually uh, fairly quick, but a little random. So I'll pause while it goes and I'll tell you how long it took. So yeah, there's the end result. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so yeah, so I've tried this with a couple of things. I tried the text prompts and I tried the uh, image thing here. So this is a text prompt, a knight made of Legos. We saw him uh, earlier on in Blender. I think it looks uh, decent. There's definitely some flaws with it. Let's head on back to Blender for a second and find out what those flaws are. So here is our knight. You're going to notice the sword is blobby as hell and actually kind of looks a little... Uh, all right, let's not talk about that. Uh, then over here, you're gonna see textures. That, so it's got, it's fine. So from this distance, it looks pretty darn good. But as you get closer to it, let's just say there are issues. So um, these were the, the five I generated. This one is another text prompt one. Uh, and then we've got two images of humans. We saw the end results of these when we started this video. And then this is a um, stock footage drawing of a house that we saw. And again, here was the end results of all of those uh, images being sent in. This one, again, if you're far enough away, you could use it as background art. But that's about it. And then again, what I do find amazing about this technology is it had this angle to work from, and yet it generated this jacket with this level of fidelity and detail and all of that, that it just, it knows from the AI model. That part is impressive. But if I was to say, this is an NPC in my world, what do you think? I have a feeling I know what the answer is. So this is a technology that again, is both amazing and useless. 
but it's only going to be useless for a while. This is going to get better and better and better at an incremental rate. And this is not the only solution out there for blank to 3D AI. There's a bunch of other things out. It's just, I'm talking about this one today because, well, frankly, it is brand new. So if you want to go ahead and check that one out, uh, it is available at tripo3d.ai. By the way, when I say it's brand new, I, I do mean the, uh, the, the one part of it, this part right here, this um, image to 3D. They already had their text to 3D solution available. And by the way, and this is where it kind of all falls apart. With everything you've seen here, I've done it with a completely free account. You need to register with an email, but that's about the extent of it. Uh, you do get uh, 10 free. Uh, so you can make 10 models a month, download them, GLB, uh, and then you go here, you can get more. But the only thing is, I haven't seen a single thing that I would pay for yet let alone at $30 a month or $200 a month. It just seems like it's a little premature to be selling these things because the end result, I, I don't see value in it. But I'm curious, do you, would you pay for the results it's generating? Would you pay for what you see here? Or would you be just better off modeling it on your own? Again, some of it is actually quite impressive. And then some of it is actually quite illegal. Uh, and then some of it is actually quite useless. So I'm curious where you stand on this. Is it just too early to be being sold? Let me know that as well. Again, this stuff, it's only getting better. So even if you hate AI, it will be a part of the future. There's just no getting away from that. So what do you think of uh, the Tripo 3D stuff and the uh, Stable Diffusion Partnership? Uh, again, I am both over and underwhelmed at the same time. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.